Hello, I'm Hansen Henry II, Foxtrot Time on Golf, and today we are looking inside this Simoko nowadays Sepura made as RM1000 Petra radio. This is the TZ band model, so it covers the civilian 410 to 430 megahertz band and not a, even a tiny bit above it. So I'm gonna look inside because I don't recall what CPU this has. I have the firmware image for it and it opens up in Ghidra. So there's. I want to take a, a closer look on if I could figure out where it checks the frequency and tuning values and so on and if I could make it accept frequencies above. Uh, 430 megahertz because the CPS can be quite easily modified to do that and that has been done but the radio boot loops if you do that as is so here's the one side of the radio the, it's just a single board which is pretty nice and it interestingly there's like springs on the pre-driver hybrid from Motorola and then there's for the audio amplifier there's also two springs which is pretty amusing but it works and it's clearer like early 2000s late 19s 19s tech so and unlike like the Nokia stuff from the same era there's no fancy stuff like it's just a push-pull UHF power amplifier with a pre-driver. The Nokia one uses just a single transistor of, of similar size and seems to use some sort of interesting pre-distortion stuff to get the same power output. So they save one transistor at the expense of being much more complicated in construction. But this is a fairly simple thing. We have the main antenna, the diversity antenna. We have the receive filter stuff. I think this is one of the VCOs. There's the other VCO. And I think that's the IF chip for this and the first mixer. And we have the character diodes here for tuning the front end. So these are one of the things limiting the band in here. And the power amplifier is, like I said, it's really simple and conventional there's nothing fancy there I'm using some BLU 30s dash 12 so two nominal 12 volt watt transistors and considering that the radio gives out at most 10 watts in normal use it makes sense there is a custom Atmel chip which is nothing new because there's custom Atmels in newer Sepuras also this is Five, five, three, four, which is annoying because that's an op amp type, so it's even harder to Google. There's an analog device, ADSP 2183, so that's those are some of the correct stuff. And the Atmel chip and the DSP both are, seem to be connected to this Supress flash chip. There is also, a, I think that's Wolfson. No, VM. I think that's not Wolfson, but I think this is some sort of. This is one of those codecs. This is a VM1690 EFT, close to the audio chip. And it's also connected to the custom Atmel chip. So let's open up a few of these screws so we can look on the other side of the board. Because what I'm after is there, the main CPU, which is Motorola 64K, is there and I want the exact model number, so that I can pull up a datasheet for it, and in general know that which version of it, of those it is, so that I can see what instructions and features it has. There's Remarkably little screws here. There's only six screws on the inside. 
on the power transistors and next to the antenna connectors. Well, uh, it's, I think it's then uh, pretty cheap to make in that sense. Like there's no screws holding the board down really, unlike the Nokia. I have a few, a few of those TMR400 Nokias that only do TMO on the same band, so they're even more useless than this one, because this, at least this one does uh, DMO, so you can use it for direct mode operation on the civilian band if you buy a frequency permit there, which we have. So I have actually used this unit on there, so this is a functional thing, so I don't actually want to break it here. We also have a few of these that, that are broken, there's some knocked off inductors and stuff like that in those that like these two really get knocked off really easily and so they rattle around but I don't have enough of these control panels headends whatever for these that I could make any use of them anyway so I've, I've yet to repair them because and I have newer sepuras for more fun on the Bands. Let's see. Do I have to open those? No. Nope. There we go. So, nothing else. Just heatsink on the other side. So, on the, on the other side, we have the GPS module, a cap, some filtering, and something from analog devices. I think that's a 45 megahertz IF filter, an 8607 ARS, okay, and just these transistors here. And then we have the GPS, which connects to this trash SMC connector, which I should replace, it's something like an SMB, it has an MCX. And if I recall correctly, these are the useful Thunderbolt version with a 10 kilohertz output, so you can make a GPS do out of these if you just remove them or reuse them. Which is the good thing to do for these, in my opinion. They are pretty old and so on. But we have the motor, main Motorola chip. We have some Motmel chip here. We have an 88. 8089LS8252 So I think that's a 89 series was a 8051 microcontroller from what I recall We have a flash for the firmware Some I think that's SRAM and not DRAM I think A Supress CY621 3, 6, VLL, I think that's SRAM and not DRAM, but we'll see. Then we have an ADM3 3202 fanti. I think this is a serial level shifter from what I recall. And so we have two level shifters here, which makes sense because there's a at least two serial interfaces because you need to it talks over serial to this one and in the versions that you can actually use to program the radio there's a uh, this normal D9 here that you connect plug your pro serial programming cable to and you use that to program in the channels and everything to the radio it's pretty nice it's a one to one serial cable so you don't need anything fancy to do the programming outside of the software so you just have a serial port in a computer race, then you connect pin 1 to pin 1, pin 2 to pin 2, and pin 3 to pin 3, and so on for the whole serial con connector. And this is an MC68CK338 CPV14, which sounds normal, it's not some SC something, so it sounds like a normal Motorola 68K one. So, which is nice, but there's, this is all for a Tetra radio, which is pretty straightforward. On the receiver we have the front-end filtering, 
first mixer and close to the first mixer we have the 45 megahertz first intermediate frequency filter which makes sense for a UHF radio we have the IF and I'm, I'm not sure which one of these is the IF filter and which one is maybe a discriminator possibly that'll be an, an an interesting way to demodulate the DQPSK, which I don't think they do. So they push it here. I think this is an ADC and the duck for it. They digitize it and this Atmel chip does something. And some of it gets then piped to the analog devices chip, which looks black top bed, which it likely is not. So it's it might be a semi-custom custom for this. The edges look shiny and this one is matte. Matte the black. Oh, oh well. Then I think this one looks like the receive VCO. I guess they use the resonator to get better face noise. Face noise. And this is also a problem because these, because of the high Q they don't tune uh, too wide. So you don't get huge tuning range, which is a problem if you want to actually wideband it, which might end up with us filing a slight piece of the metallization or way or something to get it to lock on the higher frequencies. But that that needs testing, and I'm not comfortable running this with the case open because at least some mobile radios by Nokia, like the hey. RD40 series, if you didn't screw down every single screw extremely tight and have the case closed when testing it, you could burn out the receiver and this is uh, even a more tighter design than that one. So I'd, I'd rather not risk it. And we can also see here the antenna connector switches to pin diodes, I think. Yeah, two pin diodes and possibly more. Nope, not more, only two. The Nokia design was a bit different. Maybe we'll tear one of those down also. So we have the reference, and this is the tra likely the transmit oscillator. And taking a closer look, I think we have ADE, TQT, ADE, TQT, okay, that's a mixer, mixer, mixer. ADTQT or TOT, I'm not sure. It looks like Q, but it could also be a no, like Omaha. So we have an IQ here, an IQ here, and so we have an LMX 2331 and another LMX 2331. Okay, so those are the transmitter receive VCOs. So we have the transmit VCO. Uh, and it's PLL and we have the receive VCO here and it's PLL here and the reference for both of those which is 14.4 uh, megahertz TCXO yay so <coughs> we have our transmit modulator here it goes to the Motorola MHV2723 <coughs> and then goes to the VLU30- Wells, and then goes to the antenna switch, the low, small low pass filter. There. I think there's a few stubs here to deal with the transmit harmonics. Because this looks like something that could be. Hmm. That could be actually resonated as a quarter wave, maybe. So, anyway, using a fun strip line to get rid of the harmonics. The problem with that is that it's not hugely wideband, so if we wideband this we get loss potentially from those and the harmonic suppression suffers. Also yeah this is the receive IQ filter we have the so IQ mixer and IQ stuff because we have the mixers and then the mixers are followed by Maxim Max 4107s. So those are the receive filters, and then it's piped, so likely to the DSP. 
and the DSB that does the modem stuff and the codec stuff and the protocol stack runs on the 64K. According to the rumors I've heard, uh, it was really hard to get the whole Tetra stack to work there, so I'm not terribly surprised that these don't have like a DMO repeater op option available and so on. But still, it's it's a neat thing because these were, I think, they were scrapped because I didn't pay anything for this one. They were just arrived as a pile of scrap radios to the amateur radio club, and I claimed one for experimenting. So, anyway, this was the TZ Civilian Band SRM 1000 Tetra mobile radio from Sepura. On some future video, we're gonna tear this one down and put a D9 here so that we can actually use this particular console to program radios also. I also have heard that some have modified this so that there is actually a USB port here, so we can use a USB cable to program them, so instead of you sourcing a computer with a serial port. So anyway, this was Ocean Henry 2, Foxtrot Tango Golf.